Hey everybody, we're going to do a real quick programming demonstration today. This is not intended to be a tutorial, this is a demonstration. So, you know, following at home, have fun, but I do not encourage you to type what I'm typing because it's going to be a disaster. Uh, we've got to think for a second while we do the beginning, create element canvas. Try to do this thing where we only do the JavaScript, so there's no mixing in HTML because that further confuses people. Ooh, even those are attributes. I'm just going to set these straight up as integers because, uh, and we're going to use this size so we feel like we're in 1990s because what we're doing today. Welcome, folks. Having a good time. This is going to be the Mystify Your Mind style screensaver effect. Woo! Update. Uh, we're going to call that a 30 times a second. And that's going to just cause the amazing visual updates, which we're going to talk about in a second. How it's doing, what it's doing. I love this effect. It's classic. Ooh, we got to remember document body append a child? Yeah, not append element, append child. That sounds right. Um, and that's going to be canvas. And that's going to put it up into our thing. So we see stuff. Uh, ooh, also, let's start off with a blank. Say start off. I'm going to do it. Start off with a blank screen. Uh, we're just going to assume fill rect begin or fill style begins as black. So we can now just draw this to the full size of the canvas. Can width, can height. There we go. And we'll we'll later show some some neat tricks we can do. Uh, we're gonna need some variables for our bouncing lines, but first let's just sort of think in terms of what those lines are gonna do. Uh, that's gonna always involve a context. It's gonna have a begin path, and then each one of the lines is gonna have a, a close path, not not end path. Don't don't be don't be that person. Uh, we have to call stroke on it. We need to set the stroke style, which I guess probably be more proper to do it before we do a begin path. And let's make our two lines cyan and yellow. It's going to be kind of classic. And then uh, context uh, move to and line to or how we achieve the lines, which we're going to come back and create variables for these in just a second once we get each one set up. And we could be smancier and make a function out of these things and whatever. That is not how it's going to work today. We're going to keep this pretty bare bones, straightforward and to the point. Now let's get our uh, variables going. So let's see. We need... Uh, we're going to have four bouncing edges, so x1, y1, x2, y2 is going to be the first line. That's got its velocities to it, so x velocity, y velocity, x velocity, y velocity. But then we also have a second line, which for those, let's just call those a b after each one. That's going to make it faster and easier for us to slap in other values through some copy and paste magic, because we do not feel like making functions today. Uh, we got to find some defaults, which let's do it before we call update, because that's where they should be. So the values exist by the time we hit update, so we don't break our game code. Uh, each one is positioned. Let's default these to a random spot inside the canvas. By the way, people think I speed up these videos sometimes. This is the speed that I talk. Welcome to my life. Uh, and this is like, I talk fast when I'm not rushing. When I am rushing, this is what happens. But this is the speed of my normal talking. I'm not sure how else to convince you folks of that. So, don't really care. Uh, so, there's those. We're going to slap the Bs in front. B, 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 B. Positions are now random. Velocities, same trick. Except now, we're going to do it differently in terms of we want a speed, I don't know, 5 minus that times 10. This may not even be balanced due to some sort of inclusivity of the randomness function. I don't care. It's close enough. Uh, we're not even going to bother to worry about that today. Slap the 2s in fronts. Slap the Bs on them for the secondary balls case. Invisibles, I'll call them. Maybe I shouldn't say that word ever again. So each one of these lines is going to be like from a ball to a ball. And the only difference here is that the second kind is going to have the Bs on them because it's going to correspond to our second line. Now we're going to do our logic updates. So for those, x1 plus equals x velocity. Do we slap a 1 in front? Uh, yeah, we did. Okay, so that's going to be handy for consistency's sake. Same trick for y, y velocity. Same trick then for the 2s. 2, 2, 2. This is hideous code, but that's not the point. Every now and then people are like, oh, your code isn't very nice. When I do a speed demonstration, you're right. you got to be able to turn these things on and off. There's a time and place for it, and the time for crummy code is right here and right now. So if we go left of the edge or if we go right of the other side, canvas, ooh, oh, don't want to type it out. We're gonna, it won't work for us, and we'll be sad. So if it goes off the left side or the right side, then we're going to flip the velocity. Ugh, indent, come on, sublime. Oh, I never saved, so it doesn't know my file format yet. That's awesome. We have no syntax highlighting. Welcome to coding without syntax highlighting and autocomplete. Um, so let's see, y, 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 y. And then we'll do the same trick here for um, twos. Two, 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 two. That'll be the other half of the first line. Can't remember if that was cyan or yellow, but it doesn't really matter because we're hardly looking at what we're doing because that's the fun. So it makes it exciting. Uh, ooh, gross. All right, so let's slap some Bs in front of these things for the partner line, the other secondary line. B, 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 B. Beep, 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 beep. All right, doing kind of a, ooh, 
Gross. That would have been harmless, but still cool. So we got we got those. We got these. We got stuff moving. Um, I guess we might actually see stuff. Let's try saving this and find out. Index.html. Save to the desktop. Running it in browser. Hope there's no errors. Oh yay! Look at that. It's kind of like mystify your mind. Welcome to 1995. I say welcome like three times in this video. That's not cool, but. Notice, right? It's just that there's a point at the end of each line. It bounces around the edges. Ah, oh, let's add a fade effect. That's going to be slick. All right, so check this out. It's going to help you understand, first of all, what's going on visually. If I copy this fill rect and I slap that at the top of the update and I set the fill style to black, then what you're going to see is it's going to help you reveal the technique. See how it's just two bouncing lines? There's just points bouncing off the edges. Boink, boink, and then it draws lines between them. But when we let that aggregate because we don't race it between frames, then we see the trail. But speaking of trail, part of what we can do, uh, what's it called? Global alpha? Sounds right. Um, let's say 0 0.03. This might be too much, too little. We'll come back. Then we'll set it back to 1 for other draws. And what I'm hoping for now is a slick fade effect. Yeah, so now it's happening. Let me make it less. That's probably going to look better. Yeah, so now every time it's just layering on like a partially black transparency, which causes the back to kind of fade away. But each frame, the new draw code is only three kinds of draw, right? It's each of the two lines, and it's another layering of the soft alpha. It's not having to remember all these old positions. It's just that those get left behind from having been painted on the canvas before. And ooh, I love this effect. Ooh, it's great, and it's so simple, so little code. Uh, yeah, so thank you for joining along today. You know what? If you want to check out, if you're trying to curious, like, what is JavaScript? You want to program? You want to do some stuff? Check out my free video course. I'm going to open this in an incognito tab because otherwise you're going to see my instructor interface which is not what I need you to see. CodeYourFirstGame.com will redirect you to my Code Your First Game JavaScript free video course, completely free. You just use a plain text editor, no special tools. You do it in browser, 103,000 people almost. At this point, I've taken this course. I still answer questions basically every single day on this course. It's not just a pile of videos. I'm there helping you troubleshoot your code if you get stuck so you can't stay stuck. We're going to get you through this course. You're going to have programmed a thing before. I explain it, obviously, way slower and way more clearly in this video courses. Take the video course. You'll be glad you did. Programming for the rest of your life. Get started today. Thank you as always for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this demo. I'm going to include, by the way, a paste bin of the code in the description of this video. So if you try it, you have typos, you're mad, it doesn't work, check that first before you complain. There's almost always a typo someplace. Or if you're using text edit, the editor that comes on a Mac, make sure you turn off smart quotes in the preferences or it's going to break all your quotes by replacing them with pretty left and right matches that are no good. Um, and that's probably the gist. Make sure you got a additional extension, yada, yada. You'll, you'll learn the rest in the CodeYourFirstGame.com course, which again will redirect you to my Udemy course, CodeYourFirstGame.com. Thanks for tuning in. Bye, everybody.